If you have a penis in blue jeans, and I'll pause here just for you to check, or if you've got a friend who can give you a hand, you'll find that in the general erection, you either vote left or right. But if you're wearing a kilt, the only way is up, baby. So this is called Akai But No. It's so hard to hide an erection in a kilt. It's so bleeding obvious as to just what it is. It's here because it's here because it's here. It's so hard to hide an erection in a kilt whilst attempting to be an upstanding member of society. And then there's that embarrassing interlude waiting for it to wilt. But that's neither here nor there. It's so hard to hide an erection in a kilt, especially one this well built. Uh, and so keenly felt. Here, here, other, other. It's so hard to hide an erection in a kilt. You think, is there no end to it? One doesn't have to advertise or knee and sign it. And it's impossible to doubt, deny, or disguise it. It's here because it's there and it ain't going nowhere. It's better to come clean, face up, and be a man about it. Yes, it is hard to hide. Ian, you try it. An erection in a kilt. Here you go. I'll uh, wait for Ian. How's it going, Ian? Here you go, Journal. Huh? Oh, very good, very good. As I have already said. So I whipped it off and threw it casually as could be over my left shoulder. Your dress fell to the floor. There was more, but I thought it best to skip the rude, crude, almost downright pornographic bits. Suffice it to say, we let nothing get in our way, reducing the distance between us. I disappearing into you. You one very happy Venus. I one very happy penis. Thank you. Yeah. I feel pretty. Oh, so pretty. And it's nothing to do with what I've just said. It's another morning. We were at a cocktail party, darling. And we'd come back and we were very hung over until he's going to wake us up again. I awake, covered in glorious glitter, smelling strongly of PVA glue sticking to my cheek, very hung over and covered in blue, orange, yellow, red feathers. A bubble recently blown perched upon my nose. I still half comatose. Tiny bubbles travel amongst my curls as true a bubble brightly, nestling neatly over my right eye. I observe my tiny daughter purse her lips and kiss more bubbles into being. Dilly, I force my lips still frozen in sleep to somehow speak what you do. Even my syntax and scenting structuring is shut. She smiles sweetly. I'm prettying you. I'm finished. I once had the pleasure of having a heart attack and surviving. And that's why I'm here annoying you at this moment. It's called Your Littlest Smile. Death, rather dividend, rather shy, comes to me and says it is time to die. Okay, I say, when? Now, like this moment, <laughs> this second, I struggle with my heart attack as death, feeling bad about it, repossesses my artifacts. Outside, a van pulls up with neat gothic script. Death. Removals. It spells out in big, bold letters. I like it. Death's got style and a nice smile and is a kind of groovy guy. Or is he? A lady. Boy, it's hard to tell. This heart attack hurts like hell. Okay, boys, take it all away. Death's little helpers, all big bruisers, all over six foot two. Whoop. Former nightclub bouncers, all. They take away the blue sky under which I had first kissed you. The take away the little day-to-day -day things I always loved. The shape of your mouth, your continuously falling hair brushed impatiently away from your eyes. Your eyes. The smell of your perfume in an empty room. The littlest of your smiles I had saved for a rainy day. Meanwhile, like a living Houdini, I had done it. Somehow wrestled out of the heart attack straitjacket. Damn, that that's spat in a peevish manner. How in God's name did you do that? Okay, boys, put it all back. Put it all back. Les boys scowl, growl, and put it all back. Put it all back. That first stolen kiss, that blue sky. Dead now, no more Mr. Nice Guy. You, I'll see you again, Jimmy. A tear trickled down my cheek, unable to speak. All I could do was glance down, your littlest smile clasped tightly in my hand. Thank you. That's great.
This is called toast. It's a recipe for those who don't know how to make toast. Fire! Fire! The house was busily burning down. Quick! Quick! Mum screeched. Go fetch the marshmallows. I dashed back into the inferno and emerged long minutes later. My eyebrows ablaze, my nostril hairs slightly singed. The fire had greedily gobbled up all the marshmallows for itself. Shit, said Mum. Shit, shit, shit. Slapping me about the head with each uttered syllable. I managed to save a loaf of mother's pride, I cried. It'll have to do, sighed Mum. And so we had toast. It's called recital. Talking and laughing in bed, my hand innocently between your legs. I nonchalantly tap out with nimble fingertips Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture, Opus 49, complete with cannon, which somehow tickles your fancy. I then conduct you through a series of sparkling renditions of various popular classics. Palazzian dances with its awesome chorus, Carmina Burana in all its magnificent madness, the Radetzky march with its joyful swagger, before ending up with your own personal favourite, Cachaturian's catchy sabre dance. My fingertips are blurred, glistening with syncopation. You in particular, loving the peculiar wild trombone slide and all those delicious descending little tickly notes that leave you panting in repose. All played. Thank you. Get fairy story with the real world of reality. Up above the world so high. The tree blind mice, the tree blind mice. They didn't tell you the same thing twice. And they wasn't very nice. And they wasn't blind. See, that was just a the blind. They wore shades to hide their eyes. Maestros with a switchblade knife. They ran all the vice and any opposition had already lost their lives. But fuck it, lately the farmer's wife, it was rumored she'd done the old man in and taken over everything and was now muscling in on their territory. And they didn't like it. They weren't used to being told what they could and couldn't do. Confrontation and respect was due. Both boobs bore a tattoo that proclaimed in Latin, trouble and strife and fuck you. Her other tattoo just above her pubic hair stated in mock gothic script, abandon hope all ye who enter here. One night the farmer's wife decided to separate the men from the mice, had them rubbed out, courtesy of a psycho known locally only a slasher gore. Now the tree blind mice don't see so good no more. See, being dead ain't good for the sight. Ain't that right? Ain't that fucking right? Deal with vice. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, meet the new big mama of vice, the farmer's wife, just like it spells out in nasty neon lights, twinkling, twinkling, obscuring the twilight. Thank you. Yay! <laughs> Uh, this is called Things Are Never As They Seem. Cinderella was having a ball. She was on a roll, couldn't do anything wrong at all. Wicked, just wicked, sister. She smiled to her secret self as the camera in her stiletto heels snapped click, click, click. She was so cool, she was quick, she was so, so slick. Yes, the prince's blueprints. It doesn't get better than this. This will really get on the prince's tits. A light switch said click. A gun said, click. Cinderella said, shit. How charming, said the prince, and how utterly alarming. And you really thought you could get away with this. I'll have that camera shoe, thank you. And now, my dear, I'm going to shoot you. Toodaloo. Her head exploded like a pumpkin hollowed out for Halloween. I'm frightfully sorry to be betrayed by someone I've just laid. You would have made an excellent queen, but things are never as they seem. Thank you. Yay. Oh, hey. Quick one, Michael. This is called No to a Former Lover. Hi, I'm just coming out of the hysterical grief stage and just coming into the quiet sadness and desperate desolation phase. I have to learn not to cry. I have a laughter coach now and they say I'm <laughs> doing really well. See, I can just about raise a smile. In a little while, I might even manage to be me again, somehow. Bye. 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 <laughs> Find it, the naked truth. We got together and I got to meet all her folks in Brighton, but not in the place that I thought I would. It's called The Naked Truth. When we first met, you smiled and said, I would like to see a lot more of you. 
and shocked even me with a surprise nudist weekend. Ah, oh, c'est la vie. I saw you were some kind of wonderful. You saw what you had wanted to saw, see. But you didn't have to resort to this. I was naked from the very first kiss. And this is called Feline Furls, friends. Curled up on the couch with a curled up kitten cradled in your lap. Both of you totally out of this world. I smile at such a lovely double take, tiptoe around the flat, afraid that you should wake. I kiss both your noses and you both sniff and shift, adopt new synchronized poses. I can only lo love and sit and watch as one of you makes a move that the other will match. I take a Polaroid as I am leaving, place it between your toes where on awakening it will be seen to show you how very beautiful you've been. Good morning. This is called Passing Strange because I was having a fight with, uh, with Rose and um, oh, it goes like this. Rose arose and having risen was angry. You never call me by my name, only love and darling. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet, I quoted. That's neat, she sweetly smiled. That's Shakespeare, I whispered in her ear and kissed her sweet, sweet smile, each reflected in the other's eye. Oh, quote me that kiss again, she smiled. How I do love thee, I cried. Let me count the kisses, she replied. My lovely, darling Rose. Thank you. This is all about seizing the moment when you don't seize the moment. And you should have. It's called a bad case of the what ifs and if onlys. I was watching me, watching you, watching me. Both of us wondering what the first move would be. But Lord, overawed by the great love so obviously ours, I dithered, obviously the obvious. You dawed, wasn't so obvious. If only I hadn't gotten scared, what if you hadn't become afraid, delaying our hugs and kisses for years, for years? Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, I admonished an astonished wall. And you swear you swore the same for sure, but added a few fuckets more. Love at first sight, and we just couldn't get it right. I still miss those years we could have had together, but didn't. What ifs and if onlys grew like stalactites and stalagmites from ceilings and from floors. All I ever wanted was everything. All I ever wanted was to be unquestionably yours. Thank you. And <laughs> this is when it does go right. This is called Drowned in Dreams. My feet dream of a path that would lead to your heart. My hands dream of a way of holding you that would not possess you. My lips dream of a way of saying your name that would be like a kiss every time I pronounce it. My fingertips dream of touching your skin, touching your skin, touching your skin. My eyes dream of a way of seeing beyond you to the real, real you. My dreams dream of a way of making it re so real it hurts not to be it. My heart dreams of footsteps approaching in the silence of its longing as if love were a fairy tale that could come true. And this is the summer of our love. This is called Preserve. Tongues stained with blackberries, we collect kisses, falling into ditches, being stung by nettles. Your dress snags on a briar, you cry out in mock horror. I cut my way through the tangle of thorns as if I were your prince. Charming me, you undo your buttons as you step out of your dress as if you were stepping out of yourself. Your dress hangs like a chrysalis. You let down your golden hair and we make love then and there. A tractor and some cows go by. We laugh and try to hide. The sun beats down on my bum. We giggle and come. Return to the big old dirty town and turn our blackberry picking days into luscious winter jam. And finally, this is called Pink High Heel Shoes. I remember drinking pink champagne from your pink high heel shoes. I remember making love with you wearing only your pink high heel shoes. I remember how your pink high heel shoes became ashtrays, candle holders, where you stashed your hash, deadly weapons in a out row. And you ask me if I remember your pink high heel shoes. Do I? I do. Thank you.